Firstly, at the outset, I'd like to wish you all a very warm good afternoon and would like to say that it's indeed a matter of immense pleasure to be here amidst you all. My name is Deepika, Deepika Bilwan, and I'm working as an accessibility consultant at GQ based in Hyderabad. Today, I'm going to speak on the topic, building accessible custom widgets using ARIA. But before we dive into ARIA, let's first understand the term accessibility. So in layman terms, accessibility is ability to access. It's about making things more useful, more understandable, more accessible to the people with different disabilities. So often when we speak about accessibility, people are just laser focused on just compliance, guidelines, and principles, uh, best practices, laws. And also there's a misconception that accessibility is just for people who are differently abled. Well, that's really not what accessibility is all about. It's actually way beyond that. A fifth of the population on this planet has some kind of disability and 8.5% of people are aging. So to cope up with these numbers, I think we should be addressing accessibility. If we are not, then we are leaving tons of people digitally impaired. Now, you must be wondering that why this woman is speaking on accessibility in a JS con. Well, yeah, it's a valid question. Uh, I personally believe that no one person is responsible for creating uh, an application or a content. I think it's a team effort and uh, so is accessibility. Every person in the team has some role to play, whether it's a developer or a tester or uh, any, anyone, designer. So uh, I think everyone has some role to play and if we are addressing accessibility, we have to make sure that it's on our priority while we are working. Now people with different disabilities actually use different types of assistive technologies like screen readers, screen magnifiers, voice recognition tools to access the web content. In the next slide, we're going to see how a blind person or a partially blind person access the web content using the screen reader and VDA. Web Search navigation landmark list with three items. Get the ball rolling. Web W3C Wayland. Search edit has on. Submit search graph. Main navigation landmark list with six items. Accessibility fundamentals link. Planning and policies link. Design and develop link. Test and evaluate link. Teach and advocate link. Standards slash got. Breadcrumb navigation landmark list with three items. Home link. Standards slash guidelines. Web content, WCAG visited, secondary navigation landmark list with 13 items, standards slash guidelines link. Well, if you're still awake out there and you haven't given up on this, uh, you must have noticed that the screen reader was not just reading the web content, but it was also identifying the semantics of the page like headings, links, uh, like the semantic markup, and also the landmarks of the page like header, footer, main content. Well, this wasn't the case until accessibility APIs came into picture. In late 90s, accessibility APIs were introduced as a more reliable way to pass on information to the users. And the first thing it enabled was semantic navigation and landmark navigation. And this, I would say, was one drastic change that has overturned the whole screen reader user experience. Now, the screen reader is able to navigate through the page using semantics, like if they're interested in the headings, they can navigate with the headings. And also with, the, with different screen readers, we have different shortcut keys available uh, using which they, uh, they can directly navigate through uh, the different uh, semantics and landmarks. <clears throat> now, on the screen, you can see we have accessibility layer. You can call it a stack. Uh, on the left side, we have web application. On the right side, we have assistive technologies like the one which you have seen just now, and accessibility tree actually works as a mediator between both of them. It takes a bunch of information from web application and pass it on to the assisted technologies. Now, you got the crux of how it works. So, uh, it's a common knowledge that whenever we load a content on the web, a browser actually creates a DOM. It's a document object model. It's a hierarchical structure of information that we can interact with, we can manipulate using scripting. But the lesser known fact is, browser also creates an accessibility tree. And we can call it a replica of the DOM. Uh, it takes a bunch of information from the DOM and it uh, adds it to the accessibility tree. But this time, the information is more dedicated to and specifically to be used by assistive technologies. And some 
important information includes roles of the element, properties, states, all those, all those things. So uh, we got uh, like all the information in bits and pieces here. We got uh, accessibility APIs. We got uh, assistive technologies. They can make use of it. But what do we do with all these things as a developer? Like, how can we use it? Firstly, using JavaScript, unfortunately, we cannot interact with the accessibility tree. However, what we can do is we can use ARIA. So ARIA is Accessible Rich Internet Application. It's a specification from W3C currently in version 1. Uh, we are already working on 1.1 and looking forward to version 2. ARIA is basically used whenever you want to create some custom control or a custom widget. Like you're going out of semantics and you're customizing an element, then you're using ARIA. It has a set of uh, properties, attributes that you can use in your code and you can build and create something which is much more usable to the end user. But obviously you have to use it with a little bit of caution though, that and why the reason I'll tell you later. So now we know what is accessibility tree, now we know what are the informations available, so we are going to go through all those information one by one. Let's take the role first. And this is the most crucial information which is present in the accessibility tree for the assistive technologies. Role of an element tells the browser or the assistive technologies what kind of element is that or what type of element is that. Usually, uh, when we are using native HTML semantic markup, they have implicit roles like role of a button or role of a link or images. But when we are creating something customized, like some customized elements, uh, we are using DevOps Pan to create them. Uh, then we have to add explicit roles to them. So if we see, we have two parallel examples here. On the left side, if I add type to checkbox, this will become a checkbox. So if I want to mimic the same thing and I want to create a custom checkbox, then I'll add role of a checkbox. So now the screen reader will identify this element as a role of a checkbox. Usually, uh, like span and divs uh, are considered as semantically neutral, which means they don't have any role. And uh, of course, they are not actionable elements. So we have to make a lot of changes to make it accessibility compliant. Now, state is another information, very important information, which is present in uh, uh, accessibility tree for the screen duty users. Now, uh, visually, we can perceive this information that some checkbox is checked or radio button is selected currently. But for a blind person or for a person who cannot see, uh, like, see, completely see the screen, for them, uh, we need to provide the same information in some way so that it will be announced to the screen reader users. They would know the state of the element. So if we use uh, native semantic HTML markup, we'll just use checked and that's it. Uh, I mean, the browser is uh, very intelligent enough to understand that. But if we are using a custom control that we have to use aria checked to true. Now, aria checked to true we'll use for the checkbox, which is currently in selected state or checked state. And uh, there is an important point to note here that uh, whenever we are using native HTML semantic markup, then we don't have to uh, toggle these values like browser automatically do it for you. Like You don't have to, uh, uh, like, make much efforts in making things accessible. It, they are pretty accessible on their own. But if you're using custom code and you're using ARIA property especially, then you have to toggle the value of ARIA check to true or false based on the current state of the element. And this we can achieve using scripting. So we have uh, actually a long list of uh, properties and attributes that are present in ARIA. However, name is uh, one of the most important things. Name actually differentiate uh, an element from a group of elements of a similar type on the same page. Now, on the left side, we have a very regular method of providing a name to uh, any element. We have used input and label, and we have associated the name with the input field using for an ID. Now, if we want to mimic the same thing and we want to achieve it, then it's, it's very similar to foreign ID association. We are using aria labeled by, and in a value, we are providing reference ID of the label or the accessible name of it. Now, I think we are quite familiar with ARIA and what importance uh, it has in accessibility. So I think we are good to start with like building a custom widget now. So we'll start with simple um, HTML skeleton. Our intent is to build 
uh, tab widget which is quite fairly accessible. So uh, we are going to provide the list of uh, like the tabs, individual tabs in a ULLI and uh, the tab panels in div. Now, if you provide some CSS or JavaScript to this element, now this might work fine with the mouse. But let, let's see what happens if we try to access this widget using a mouse and with screen reader on. So I think this was working just fine. And this might look very simple, but uh, trust me guys, this has huge number of accessibility issues that we're gonna find out over the next few slides. Now we are trying to access the same widget, same tab widget using keyboard and screen reader on. Let's see what happens. Well, nothing at all. We were not even able to enter into the widget. And uh, if we are not able to get to the widget, that means we cannot interact with it. That means we, we don't know that if, if something is there on the page or not. So everything pretty much stops there. So how can we rectify all this? How can we uh, build a custom widget which is much more accessible? Uh, what are the properties that we can incorporate? What are the attributes that we can add in this? So we'll start with simple roles. Uh, let's start with role of a tab. Role of a tab, as the name says, we'll apply it to uh, individual tabs, individual tab controls. Now, tab list, we, tab list, we'll apply to the UL, which is which works as a container for the tabs. Role of a tab panel, we'll provide to individual tab panels or the content which appears on activating any tab. So oh, we have a code here. Now we will see how do we apply these things. So firstly, roll tab list to the UL or the container. Roll tab to individual tabs. Roll tab panel to the content or the tab panel content. Next, there are certain other attributes. So I was talking about the states and uh, the name, the label, right? So all those attributes also we have to add here. Firstly, we'll see tab index zero which will put the tab panel in the tab sequence. Tab index minus one, aria selected, aria control. So what are all those things? We don't know. Okay, we're gonna see this one by one. Firstly, uh, uh, as we were uh, accessing the, this widget using keyboard, so we have noticed one uh, problem there. We were not able to enter to the widget or to reach to the widget. So what do we do to provide focus to the widget? I think you all are familiar with this. We'll provide tab index of zero. Tab index of zero is the most natural way of providing a tab focus or keyboard focus to any element. It keeps the element in the natural tab order of the page based on element's location in the DOM. And if you want to provide, uh, if you want to take focus from an actionable element or any element, then you'll provide tab index of minus one. So at a time, like from our design, uh, design pattern, if you follow our design pattern, then uh, uh, we'll provide tab index of zero to only one element or one tab, which means only one tab will receive focus at, at a time, and we can navigate within the tabs using arrow keys, and tab index of minus one to all the other tabs. Next. Uh, suppose you are a sighted keyboard user. You are just navigating through the page, like through the, all the actionable elements of the page using uh, tab keys. So you'll just keep on tabbing and tabbing and tabbing, and you don't know where you are because you don't have any focus indicator. So, uh, of course, if you don't have any focus indicator, you, you won't know where is your current location on the page right now. So for that, we have a small code snippet here. We can provide focus indicator with this, and uh, usually user agents provide their default focus indicator for all the actionable elements, but if it's not there, we have to make sure that it's available because it's one of the checkpoints that we uh, look for whenever we test any page for compliance. Next, uh, we were talking about the state of the element. So in, like visually, we can perceive which tab is currently selected. Okay, but if we want to provide the same state information to the screen reader user or to the user who cannot see the page, then we'll add an attribute aria selected to true and aria selected to false. So this is very similar to aria check that we have seen earlier. 
aria selected is basically uh, we we are going to add to a tab which is currently in selected state or expanded state and uh, one more thing uh, as we have seen in the checkbox example uh, we have to toggle this value to true and false true and false based on the current state of the element now we have aria controls so uh, visually we know which tab panel or the tab contents belongs to which tab like tab 1 belongs to okay ta this this uh, content belongs to tab 1 this content belongs to tab 2 but how do we build this relationship between the tab and the tab panel well using aria controls we can do that we can provide aria controls to the individual tabs and as a value we can provide reference id of the of the content it's controlling and also it's very important at some time because uh, uh, with some screen readers uh, generally when we when you uh, activate a tab or you select a tab and the corresponding tab panel will display uh, then the screen reader will assist you with some shortcut keys uh, that you can use and you can directly navigate to the widget so i think by now you must have understood the importance of uh, keyboard and accessibility so it's very important that uh, we start listening we we should start listening to the keyboard events along with the mouse events as well and uh, we have to make sure that whatever functionality we can achieve with the mouse it's available for keyboards as well otherwise that will not be accessible like it will not be completely accessible for everyone uh, because there are some people who are using just keyboard to navigate uh, through the page they are not using mouse uh, like the screen reader users for example so we have to make sure that all the functionality that that is available by mouse is available by keyboard as well and for that we have to make sure that we use uh, device independent event handlers which means the mouse event handlers event listeners which has uh, their corresponding keyboard counterparts next is the keyboard navigation so actually uh, for different widgets like tree or menu or a dialog we have different design patterns and and also different keyboard navigation patterns but if we'll talk specifically about the tab widget which we have seen right now so uh, the one which we are going to follow is uh, we're going to put keyboard focus on just one tab and then we're going to navigate within the tabs using arrow keys and if you want to activate any tab or select any tab you can press enter or space key and on next tab you will be on the controlled or the tab panel of that element so this is a very uh, simple function uh, which uh, does exactly the same what what i have said right now and for this we have to grab the key codes of all those keys like the arrow keys and tab key and we have to put it this function and this will work usually when we use a uh, um, native semantic markup a browser provides uh, their compatibility for a space or enter key but if it's not then we have to grab the key codes and we have to mimic the same functionality okay now we're going to bind everything together using this uh, simple function we are going to toggle the value of are you uh, selected to true or false based on the element state we are going to toggle the value of tab index to 0 and 1 based on the uh, L, like the focus state of the element we are going to toggle the value of are you controls and also uh, are you hidden so are you hidden i know i haven't explained it here but are you hidden basically are you hidden to true we provide to the tab panels which are currently in hidden state of course uh, if we select one tab only single tab panel will be displayed at a time so uh, the one which is available like which is uh, uh, visually available for the user for that uh, are you hidden uh, will be false and for rest of the tab panels it will be are you hidden to true <laughs> now uh, we are going to witness a more accessible version of uh, a tab panel that we have seen earlier this has all the properties all the attributes uh, which we have gone through so far and uh, as we have put so much time and effort in this i'd like to request you all to pay a bit more attention uh, to notice uh, what difference it actually makes to the screen reader users Gmail system, 
Okay, so if you have noticed, uh, the screen reader is announcing the role of the element tab, tab panel, and it's announcing the state of the element uh, selected, and it's announcing the name of the element, like Nils form and Agnes Obel joke. So uh, this is a very basic one. This is a very simple example, so I've taken this up. And uh, if you guys are not familiar with ARIA, then now I think I'm hoping that you are now quite familiar with it. And I'm hoping that you would like in some way incorporate in, uh, accessibility in your, um, not just in your uh, work life, but also in your day-to-day -day life, because it really helps uh, some people to be more like, some things to be more useful to uh, more people. And also we have diversified group of people. So we need to, uh, we should, we should make sure that uh, our things are more useful and more accessible to everyone. Lastly, I'd like to conclude my talk by saying that use ARIA, but uh, be very cautious because, uh, yeah, it can work like a charm, but sometimes if you tend to overuse it or misuse ARIA, uh, believe me, it has all the strength, it has all the powers to make things even more worse for the end user. So that's all from my side. Um, we have some resources here. You can go through the accessible tab widget examples. You can go through ARIA versions, which I mentioned. You can go through the cheat sheet, um, accessibility web content accessibility guidelines. And if you have any questions, please go ahead. Yeah, sure. Hey, uh, thank you for covering this topic here. I, I'm very happy about it. Uh, I wanted to understand what's the library ecosystem for uh, popular JavaScript frameworks with ARIA? Well, JavaScript, as I said, uh, ARIA, like we cannot interact with ARIA. But using JavaScript, we can toggle the values or we can add some value in the accessibility tree. We can delete some value from accessibility tree, but generally uh, it's not very much compatible with it. Yeah, what I needed to understand was, is there a React uh, library for... Future? As of now, no, it's a part of future scope. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. thank you. Hi. Sorry, uh, you're not audible? Hello? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Audible? Great. So I think my initial question already got answered. <coughs> so I already want to ask there is some way we can do something in React or a particular library or framework or some boilerplates. Like, you know, I've never got a chance to work on this accessibility thing, but if we have to start yeah. on thing, <laughs> we have to start by syntax one by yeah. one or something, like we can little bit reuse it or some mm -hmm. take the advantage of best practices. Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, f firstly, if you got the like idea of ARIA and idea of first of all accessibility, then it's I'm like very much thankful to everyone. <laughs> and uh, uh, at code level, yeah, you can add ARIA properties, but again, uh, like you you need to know where to add it, and you need the exact uh, like you need the exact uh, know the exact usage of it. Otherwise, you will you will tend to misuse ARIA, and that will be like blunder. But at code level, as I said, like as I answered before, um, using JavaScript, we can just uh, add the values, we can just uh, remove the values, we cannot interact with it as of now. Uh, but I think I might be wrong, but uh, as per my knowledge, I think we cannot interact as of now. We can just, uh, uh, you know, manipulate it and we can just override the information which is already present there in the accessibility tree. Um, however, I think it's a part of feature scope, so. Just one more question. Yeah. So, uh, how much is it uh, like reasonable for the lighthouse uh, scores or matrices for performance, or like in terms of SEO and all those things? Mm -hmm. So, how much is it relevant if we do uh, run a lighthouse score of any particular application, or something? So, there's yeah. accessibility, yeah. So like yeah. Uh, yeah. designed for that. Mm -hmm. How much is it? Relatable to that. You actually, uh, the compatibility of accessibility differs from application to application, and uh, also the screen readers' compatibility. If I would say, like to be more precise, uh, 
well, I think you can use accessibility in your applications like as much as you want, but uh, like uh, I think what was your question? <laughs> Just wanted to ask like uh, majorly how much it actually obviously very as per the application to application, but yeah, how much is relevant to Lighthouse like? In terms of SEO, yeah, I think I answered it. Uh, like the compatibility of accessibility changes with each and each and every application, and uh, obviously uh, we are not using ARIA in everything. It's just it's still evolving. So let's see how much we can do with it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. You're audible. <laughs> I can hear you. I've never used the Okay. Can you are interacting with You can interact like you just spoke about interaction with the website. Yeah. Two, three ways. Hmm. Like Yeah. Keyboards. Yes. Voice. Hmm. Screen reader. Hmm. So can you interact a street uh, you know, trigger access to the screen reader? Like like click on no, the no. Uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Hmm. So these uh, things are not inbuilt in screen readers that we have to, uh, uh, like we have to, like for different browsers, we have different screen reader compatibility. And uh, we have to make sure that whatever functionality we are achieving with the different screen readers, it is available in the form of code somewhere. We have to do it. Right, so if we are achieving something uh, with, like, uh, as I said, like, uh, on not only the mouse users, not only the keyboard user, there are other t uh, assisted technologies as well which are uh, taking part in this. So uh, we have to make sure that we are coding something or we are implementing that in the code level to make it compatible with your uh, browser or your application. Yeah. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. No. No, no. This. Uh, okay. Uh, the screen reader will just read the content which is there, which is already available. It cannot perform any action. Not, not active. Oh, if you navigate with the tab keys. Tab keys is obviously we use it to navigate through the focusable elements. So if you want to read the static elements, we have arrow key navigation. So we have different shortcut keys available with different screen readers. So if you navigate with the arrow keys, it will read the static content on the page as well. So screen reader will do no function for you. It will just read the page content and that's it. Yeah, voice recognition tools and all. Yeah. Um, voice recognition tools, like for someone who is motor disabled, who cannot use keyboard or who cannot use mouse, for them, uh, they can just command to the computer, or they can they have some uh, some tools which I just mentioned. So they can voice assistant tools, like um, also Alexa. It's a good example of that. So, uh, and also, uh, like we have uh, um, this uh, in WhatsApp, we have this voice rec uh, recording option, right? So there also we don't have to type; we just press uh, press on that button and we can record our. Uh, so that is, uh, so there are various methods that we can incorporate accessibility in, and we can also address different types of disabilities. Actually, it's a huge spectrum in accessibility. So uh, we have different tools, like all of them I cannot cover here. So uh, that uh, that also you can go through uh, all all those links which are available. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, uh, like as I said, it's just an interface. Uh, you can use it anywhere, but the only point is it should be compatible with your screen readers, firstly, and uh, the screen reader should be able to identify and expose those uh, information which we are adding through ARIA. So that is the main point, and uh, that we have to try and check. Like we cannot uh, generalize that it's available for them; it's not available for this kind of people. Yeah. 
Hmm. Yeah, that's why uh, that's not a very you know a highlighted thing and something which people actually uh, focus a lot. But now I think, as you all are aware of, you must must keep this thing in mind, as you are all developers and you are also responsible for building more uh, accessible uh, applications. Okay, one more last. Yeah. Hi, Deepika. Thank Hi. you for uh, this presentation. So I think uh, from what I heard from the questions is there are a lot of misunderstanding about accessibility, yes. ARIA, and uh, SEO practices. Mm -hmm and whether there is a pattern available already for frameworks and all. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's a matter of, you know, exploration. So there are patterns and libraries available for each and every framework out there. You just need to find it, uh, the right tool for it. Uh, for accessibility related things, you can just uh, search in GitHub something like, you know, Ali, A11Y, Awesome yeah. Ali. There is a uh, something called Awesome Ali, where you get a list of all the libraries and stuff like that. And uh, one more thing I would suggest is that, um, so since Deepika is from DQ, so DQ is providing accessibility audit uh, for your products. Yes. So you, you can check with uh, DQ for the accessibility audits. So we in Freshworks, our company uh, recently made an accessibility audit for our products and we found out a lot of accessibility bugs. And um, accessibility is not just for, you know, B2B or B2E, it's for everyone. It's not just, you know, uh, if you're giving products to a particular uh, segment of users, so it, it, it doesn't need to be like those segment of users are not, you know, uh, don't have any accessibility yes. impairments. Hmm. So they can have uh, anybody. So as uh, Deepika mentioned, 5% of the world population is differently abled people. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where they come from. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks.